Uh, welcome to our weekly educational rounds here at Seclair, an integrative holistic uh, psychiatric facility where we take pride in treating uh, people, not diagnoses. Uh, my name is Jim Ellermeyer. I'm a behavioral health therapist here at Seclair, and today I'm joined by two of my colleagues. On my left would be... Hi, I'm Ashley, and I'm an art therapy intern at Seton Hill University. And on my right... I'm Julia Anselmo. I'm a PA student at Chatham University. Wow. So we're all we're all students, are we not, Julia? Yes, we are. Like that, always in search of knowledge. So we all often provide some thirst at the fountain of knowledge. So uh, tell us a little bit about uh, your being here at Seclair, Ashley. Well, being an art therapy major, there is not an art therapist here, so I've been incorporating a little bit of art into the practice here. And art therapy is a form of expressive therapy that uses the creative process in healing through your emotional, mental, physical well-being. Absolutely. So, Julia, when we talk about treating people in a holistic manner, what does that mean to you? Uh, that means to me uh, treating the person, like you said, holistically, so mind, body, spirit, everything combined. So not just treating, like you said, a diagnosis, but treating um, sort of the conditions or problems that lead to the diagnosis or that attribute to it in some way. Um, so, for example, with the art therapy, that's not a traditional um, psychiatric treatment. It's not like a medication, but it's also therapeutic in a different kind of way. That's why it ties in nicely here at Seclair. Sure. So what we try to do, Ashley and Julia, is take everything that's going on inside and put it out in front of us. And one of the, one of the ways that it can be done is through art. Yeah. So could you... Uh, so let's uh, let's say that Julie and I, I have come to you, as in you are therapist. Okay, this is our first visit. Take it away. <laughs> okay, well for art therapy, sometimes it's intimidating for some people to immediately draw out their feelings. So a nice warm activity that I like to do are scribble drawings. So I'm going to ask you guys to pick a color out of our oil pastels here. Hmm. Julia tells me that her face turns red, so we'll see if it gets it. <laughs> okay. And sometimes I like with clients to kind of just warm up. So let's like loosen our arms, we'll shake them out, get some rhythm and <laughs> some movement going on. <laughs> yes, perfect, Jen. <laughs> okay, so now typically you could do the scribble drawings a lot of different ways. You can use them bilateral, so you could use both hands. So mm. if you would like to do this, maybe you can pick another color and use both of your hands and scribble together. Oh, that sounds like fun. That sounds good. And a lot of the time, using that non-dominant hand connects the brain. So using the bilateral movements... Connects the brain. Um, because you're using your one side of your brain and using the other hand kind of mm. travels over to the other side. Hmm. So now we're just going to scribble. So kind of using the same motions that we did. In the scribble. Okay. Yep. And whenever you're ready. Okay. So for the next step. We're going to kind of look out of our scribble drawing from afar. So either turning it, if we were in a session, I would kind of put it on the floor and we could walk around it. So what we're going to do is search with, for images within our scribble. Hmm. So kind of flipping your scribble drawing and looking around, maybe something sticks out to you. Kind of as if when you were a kid, did any of you ever look in the clouds and look for images? So kind of a similar theory of looking into your scribble and looking for an image. Mm. And then we are going to enhance that image. Enhance it? Wow. So turning so, your paper mm -hmm. and just kind of seeing if anything kind of pops out at you. I see a lot of kind of circles, even though I was scribbling some of the some of the, a lot of the lines are connected. Mm -hmm. So if you'd like, um, maybe that is your image that you see. So enhancing those circles, enhancing those shapes. So maybe it might not be a particular 
figure or something, but looking at your circles and kind of you can change colors, you can do a different color and enhancing that part of your drawing. Okay. And you can add lines to your scribble, you can add different colors, patterns, whatever kind of sticks out at you. Hmm. I drew a pair, I didn't even know it. Huh. Ashley, is there anything linked to uh, the subconscious when a person does this type of activity? Um, it is a theory, so kind of using the movements and looking into something, it is your subconscious mm. going into it. So that is kind of one of the reasons that it's a good starter activity a lot of ways, just to kind of get those juices flowing mm -hmm. and look at your image differently and look at it in a different light. And a lot of times, even using the scribbles, practicing mindfulness, and kind of, if we were in a session, maybe just playing music and scribbling and kind of just focusing on the movements that you're doing with your body. So looking at it in that way, too. So your plan is to incorporate mindfulness in with your activities? Yes. Okay, great. A lot of art activities, a lot of art in ways, it's mindfulness. Mm just kind of focusing on this moment and focusing on what you're doing is practicing my mm -hmm. So your drawing would be? Um, I don't know, I kind of I saw a balloon in my one figure, I don't know if you can kind of see it, and then some kind of animal. Little blob I saw a smiley face. Um me? Oh, I also saw a smiley face and then I made this into a pair and a leaf. Hmm. <laughs> if we were in a session I would ask us maybe to come up with a story with your images that we found. I saw a kind of saw a smiling a smile. So that enhanced and uh, this this I I thought it was a whale. So maybe I'm hungry. Could be. <laughs> I'm out of whale. Yes. And of course, this is going to be edited, so let me tell you a little story. Have you ever seen the Three Stooges? <laughs> yeah, I've heard Have of them. Have you seen the Three Stooges? <laughs> no. You never heard of them? I've heard of them. Little Larry Curly? Yeah. Well, one time, uh, Larry, who was one of the great philosophers of Western civilization, mm -hmm. came up uh, to Mo and said, uh, Mo, I understand that uh, fish is uh, brain food. And Mo said, well, then I suggest you eat a whale. Hmm. Of course, whales are. So that's just that's just that's just that's just a little blast from the past. So uh, so uh, here I have this whale and I have a I have this smiling a smile. Where do we go from? Where would you go from there, Ashley? Um, like I said, I would maybe have you write a story. Maybe start with a once upon a time mm. story and incorporate your images, and we could kind of go from there. There's a lot of different ways to talk about your images. You could and technique in art therapy is maybe have a conversation with your images hmm. so maybe more. could you say more about that conversation so you could have i would ask you to maybe have your will and your smiley face maybe have a conversation some kind of story come up with mm -hmm. do you find there's a particular type of age class or a particular type of uh, condition or disorder that this type of uh, approach works the scribble drawings I find particularly works well with kids. Kids really like it. Teenagers, adults. I think the scribble drawing is really like kind of the base. It's it's a good first activity. Um, art therapy in general can be used with all ages, all diagnoses, all populations. So just using the art materials and scribbling, you could use that with uh, children with autism, maybe they cannot enhance the image by using the scribble drawing and kind of get them 
more of the movement and focusing mm -hmm. on something like that. So kind of balancing it. And so I, I think there's a lot of misunderstanding mm -hmm. on art therapy. Let's go back to this morning when you and I saw a patient and mm -hmm. I introduced you as a art therapist and art therapy major. Mm -hmm. And her question to you was, good, I need, I, I need someone to teach me how to draw. Yes. Um, so art therapy doesn't really teach you how to draw. It's not focused on so much the product and the techniques. It's more of the process and maybe some insight that comes from your drawing. So maybe particularly the scribble drawing, like we're not really focusing on making a masterpiece here. That's a lot of our art therapy is that we're not really focused on the end piece so much, but kind of the process that gets us there. So Julia, quite, quite often what happens when we ask me to introduce art therapy, people say, oh, I can't draw. That's usually the number one thing that they say. Yes. And the great thing about art therapy is though, it's not just drawing. Art is a creative process. So it can be involved with painting, photography, poetry, journaling, mm -hmm. um, a lot of different the mediums like clay, the oil pastels is a good one. That's what we were working with. Shock pastels, it's more fluid mm -hmm. movement. So it's not so much focusing on the actual product. It's more of the, the flow that you kind of get from art. Have you found that any particular art therapy methods have worked with, let's say, the elderly? Um, sensory. It's more of like the sensory aspects of doing the art. So working with the clay, and maybe you have some arthritis in your hands and kind of just playing with the clay and moving the hands. So it might not even be really focused on the images that come, but it's more of the process and the art that come from it. So what I hear you saying, Ashley, is that it's, uh, there's many more dimensions than simply drawing, than simply coloring. Yeah. Tell us some more tell us some of those modalities. You, you mentioned clay. Different clay. So like I said, it's the sensory aspect for a lot of it, kind of using the mindfulness and using clay. Found objects is a good one. Uh, for instance, we, I did a mindful walk and I had us pick an object out. So found maybe like a rock and come back with this rock and just staring at this rock so in detail and just maybe noticing things that you didn't see about this rock before. Noticing all the different textures on it. Like where was this rock at? Creating a story about this rock. Like where did you find it? What did this rock see? So using like projection kind of. Okay. Just staring intently and using the mindfulness, mm -hmm. noticing details. So this would be a wonderful way to, to incorporate some activity, some action and effort into a, what we would call traditional talk therapy. Yes. Wonderful. So when was the last time you scribbled, Julia? Uh, about five minutes ago. <laughs> Before that, mm -hmm. when I was... Small, or maybe at the other art therapy session, actually, mm -hmm. actually, but not for a while before okay. I came to school. Okay, well, it's it's certainly one way to get out of yourself. It's certainly one way to maybe if you take the anxiety and put it out on paper. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this might be a way. I'm, I'm sure that you're not going to when you're a physician assistant. This is not going to be a maybe a prescribed rule. Physician assistants mainly what the, I understand in your your talk about the uh, Western. Medicine, uh, mainly it's based on what? What's the medicine? Western medicine is based on what? Prescriptions. Actual mm. drugs, prescriptions. Right, writing prescriptions. <clears throat> so what we're looking for, there's other things, there's al there's alternatives, and also there's conjunctive type of therapies that can enhance. So when we, so when we, so when we talk about uh, uh, synchronicity, uh, what, what are we talking about? When we talk about synchronicity, we're talking about where one plus one equals more than two. Okay, when perhaps art therapy combined with the medications are often often necessary to stabilize and ease and perhaps tighten the leaky pipes that may be going on in your brain, and then these can be uh, additive type of enhanced therapy methods. So I would my guess is that they didn't suggest this in your no. how many uh, how many classes how many classes on mindfulness did they have none okay <laughs> how many classes on on uh, 
nutrition and sensible eating did they have? Uh, just guest speakers. Uh -huh. Not a class. Okay. Okay. So how many uh, how many classes did you have on spirituality? No. Uh -huh. Okay. How many classes did you have simply on expressing the joy of being? No. Mm -hmm. Okay. So how many classes did, did you have? I know that physicians, I don't believe me, they, I know it sounds like I'm bashing the physician world, but it sounds like what you treat as symptoms. Mm -hmm. right? When a person comes in with symptoms, we treat them, right? right? Okay. So in the psychiatric world, what we do is look what's driving those symptoms. If a person comes in with diabetes and you, uh, you you give them metformin or you give them some type of a drug to deal with that, and we don't look at what's behind, what what's the lifestyle or the genetic predisposition driving that condition, then we're blowing smoke out the first floor window when the fire's in the basement. Mm -hmm. And my hope is that uh, the physician assistants that come through our program uh, know that there's uh, additive enhanced type of therapies and treatments that can be uh, together can produce some synchronicity with the, with the patient. And I believe that's uh, what you certainly have. And I've seen you with uh, patients already. And uh, this is a nice way, this is kind of a nice way to ease into a session. When often, actually, you see people when they come in and they present, things are not going well mm -hmm. in their life. And this kind of gives them that brief pause. Mm -hmm. So can respond to situations rather than react. It's a way for them to talk through the art. So maybe they might not be verbally saying what they're saying, but the art speaks for itself in a lot of ways. That's beautiful. Uh, there's a person here who says that quite often. Our medical director, <laughs> Dr. Safter Chandra, my life is beautiful. Well, certainly what you do here is, is beautiful. And I would like to take this opportunity for anyone out there who views this podcast to uh, to contact Seclair, www.seclair, S-E-C-L-A-I-R-E-R, -E -R, uh, to view what type of uh, treatments that we have here, what type of modalities we use. And if you want to be treated like a person and not a diagnosis, I'd suggest you give us a call. Contact us. Any final uh, words today, Julia? Nope. Have a great day. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Ashley? Nope. Thank you for listening. Okay. And once again, as usual, we'll always give a free prescription at the end of our podcast. Fruits, nuts, and vegetables, and uh, unplug your television. I'd suggest everybody at least be in recovery from the news and perhaps take up fishing. And for a truly mindful experience, we ask you to fish without bait, a lifetime without definitive expectations. Until then, uh, we'll be waiting to see you.